Do you like planes? Do you like Transformers? Do you like sleek, sexy vehicles? Well, I got the thing for you. This dude. Revenge of the Fallen Leader Class Jetfire. Currently bending upward for some reason. I honestly do not know how to fix that. I'm sure I can if I re transform him, retransform him. But we're going to do that now. So, ignore the fact that he does not have rear tail fans. You can imagine them. You can still see it in the mind's eye. But this, this thing. Is it tough to stay together? Yeah. Is it mostly a shell former? Yeah. Is it still magnificent? Absolutely. The lines, especially if everything complete. The SR-71 Blackbird, though, is just a fantastic vehicle. And uh, one of my dad's favorites, actually. He likes... He doesn't even like Transformers, but he loves Jetfire because of the SR-71 Blackbird. But let's go over it in terms of being a Transformers figure. First off, as I said, he is bending upward. The arms, as you can see, are below the cockpit and the entire vehicle, pretty much, is just a bunch of sections which clip together. He also does that. And see, they're individual plates. And so you have to line them up, otherwise, you can unattach them, but it kind of breaks the look, you know. Now, I have done something wrong when putting the arms in and lining everything up, meaning that to get the plates to line up, he has to kind of bow upward. I don't really care because he's not going to be in vehicle mode for long. So, one thing to get out of the way immediately, pointy bits. These parts for the engines and the nose are made of soft rubbery material. I don't think it's necessary, but it's, um, especially you transform it because there's that ugly gap right there, but because the rubber just decides to move out of the way, you cannot, you can't get rid of it. But safety laws, safety laws, whatever. There is amazing line work on the back of the plane as well as those amazing, those really cool scratched up Decepticon symbols. Bayfirst doesn't really care for uh, honoring the old continuity. They do it in small notes sometimes, like Jetfire being a former Decepticon. I thought that was cool. Now, transformation. As you can see, there he is. There is Jetfire. He is just underneath an airplane. And... If you display the airplane, I display it from a eye level or lower shelf. Because if you display it from higher up, you can just tell it's all it's all robot. You don't get this lovely view. So you pretty much do what's happened already. You start breaking components in half. Um, one of my favorite parts is these giant sections. They come out on amazing ratchets. listen to that all day. My parents couldn't, but I could. It's why you love old toys. And then you just crack it apart. Like a leek or a cucumber. You just break it. You take this part and you part form it. You just take it and you just rip it off. Don't need it. And then you can totally go walking that way. If you want to put the plane back together, a Gur walking SR-71, for whatever purpose that serves to you, you have to get these things on ball joints. You have to get them, unpeg them, and the ball joints will always come off. Just accept that as part of your life. You fold these out, peg the ball joint back in, and these will go live somewhere. I'll do... In the meantime, take them, peg the ball joint, of course, 
foam it up. <laughs> and just kind of set them back here for now. And when you hear that sound, you have done something right. I like to put them kind of as shoulder pauldrons, shoulder blades. But again, you can be as movie accurate or as unmovie accurate as you want to. And you can put them however you want to. Or wherever you want to. And it's pretty much it. Aside from folding out his rubber ears, if you even want. That will not stay. Do not, do not attempt to have that stay. It will, not, it, will, it will never. That is a running theme. I don't know if I got a lemon. But a, a lot of Jetfire, he has. It, it is not a design flaw. Because he has a lot of tabs and slots and ports and connections. But right, you can see here. There are two posts and ports that should stay. And you plug it in, but it just doesn't. And the backpack, you know, it, it's so nothing tabs in anywhere, which is good and a bad thing. Like I said, you can um, make it look however you want to, but you can. It, it, there's no specific resting place for everything. Now, articulation. It is present. You can rotate at the knee for all that does. You can go up and back on some really stiff ratchets. Go out. He has toe bend that can go up and down only that far. It really doesn't serve much purpose because the knees. That's his knee. That is as far out as the knee will go. If you don't like um, him looking hunched over like a chicken walker from Star Wars, too bad. That's all you can do about it. You can't do anything. Accessories and gimmicks. He's a cane. And it's, he can hold it because his hands open and close and rotate his hand. That's all that his, that's all a cane does. It just stands there. You can take this part formed part and you can fold it. You can Open this part up, and you can fold this down, and you can fold these down, and he will it will go into his hand, and it will become a gun. And he will drop his cane, because no one cares about it. So that's cool that he has a gun, and it, the way the gun wraps around his hand, it really mimics the way in the movies... Um, mimics, you know, for the best it could do in 2000s. It mimics how in the movies, you know, the Transformers, they never held a gun. Um, the guns would just come out from their hands. So that, that kind of gives that effect, if you squint. Finally, because every leader back in the day was made with loving care, <clears throat> these parts would will move, and they will move when you pull this golden lever down and he will shake his head and say and you can do that all you want and annoy your parents because Jet fires his name. Now let's be honest. Why are you watching this video? You're not watching this video for this figure. His articulation is mid. He can't do anything. There's no waist joint. He can move his arms, but if you try to move his arms, they'll just, you're not happy because he only has that much of a joint. He can, 
that is his, he, it looks like his arm's broken when you try to bend it. These things get in the way. He, he can rotate, and he can go out and in, but you're not here for the articulation. You're here for the best gimmick potentially ever in Transformers history. You know what time it is. So, to get Jetfire ready, you're going to slice him apart, basically. You're going to half transform by unpegging this. You will take these parts and you will unpeg them. I can't get this on the frame. Basically, if you imagine a giant six-legged insect creature thing, you're not too far off. You're going to take these white parts and fold them in. And then you're going to do something really special with the feet. What you're going to do is you're going to rotate the feet 180. And you're going to split. You're going to flip the heel up. And you're going to split this part away. And that's pretty much all you're doing. And then he's ready. Put him off to the side. That, that does not... If you want to talk about dead jet... That's dead jet fire. That is... Imagine this crawling towards you in your nightmares. That is not... That is not... That's unfortunate. <laughs> that is unhappy. So... You're going to take Optimus Prime. And he's pretty much ready, except for you have to unpeg these parts and untransform his back. Just like that. And now, cue the music. I'm a child of the 2000s. You are ready to combine. So, there are two uh, humps on the back of Optimus. You're going to hook these two white hooks on Jetfire over those humps. And that's basically the majority of the combination done. You can work from top down. And you're going to take these rubber pieces that have been in the way the whole time on Jetfire, which you can't even see because there's so much mass in the way. I'm going to take the rubber pieces. I'm going to take the rubber pieces. And Prime's chest has a certain shape. And the rubber pieces will fit in that certain shape on those moving parts of pain that I mentioned on Prime's review. And they will peg together. And you see what's about to happen. You have everything lined up correctly. Just like in the movie, they will peg together and they will cover up. Like this part will fit onto this part. Like this. And then for the feet, what you're going to do is you're going to undo Prime's feet. Partly. Part. I'm just going to split this part and angle his foot down a bit. And that will allow Jetfire's heels to combine using... There's clips, and there's a clip here, and there's a post right there, and there's a post on the bottom of Prime's heel. And they will all just clip together and they kind of wrap around each other while Prime's foot wraps around Jetfire's heel in a odd sort of... The clips are solid though, so once you have it done, it's done. You don't have to worry about it. And that forms just a giant... This whole assembly is a giant foot now. Like that. Do the same thing on the other side. So you just orient things again as per usual, however you want. You take Jetfire's arms... And you basically line them up. There's no attachment mechanism, but you line them up so they're 
on Jetfire's, if they're on Prime's arm. And if you want to move one, you can move the other. So, if you want Prime's arm to be out, you're going to move Jetfire's arm to be out. And they just, so it looks like they're, um, like these are connected. If you want Prime's arm to be facing forward, doing kind of a stab, you're going to move Jetfire's arm. So it's facing forward and it's doing the stab. It's doable. I find it fun to line them up, but, you know, people are, are individuals and have their own personalities, likes and dislikes. You may find this incredibly tedious and boring. You take the thrusters and, of course, they're, like, they're like iconic for uh, Jetfire Prime. You had them in the back. And you have this magnificent beauty of a figure. I know that the designer almost had a stroke designing this, but he did an amazing job because just look at that. There is no words. Like, you'll compare this to the Studio Series version where it's just some parts from Jetfire plugged onto Prime and it's half as the size there's no comparison. This beats it. This knocks it out of the park. There is one issue people take with this. They say you cannot move the legs. It's just a brick. I will disagree. For as much posing as you need to do, this will allow you. So, you can have him angle forward like this. Kind of like he's lunging or about to take off for flight. You can have him in that iconic... Again, this is where people, people might, not, might not like lining these up, but I do. Could have him in that just let's roll and the, the the leaning forward really helps to accomplish that like look at that that looks like he's about to take off and kick some ass but if you want to have him facing forward more traditionally you just kind of gotta grab the whole front and kind of shift it back and now he's facing completely stock straight. If you want to have him look like he's moving forward, like an action pose, well, it's actually not that difficult. You just take the knee of Optimus, move the arms out of the way, hit the knee of Optimus, and you can still bend it. It still is able to be articulated. So you can have decent articulation, like you just saw me earlier. You can splay the legs or bring them together. You can, you know, you can even bring, if you really want to, I have just this part attack detached, but you can really just yank this up and get um, a, a, a high knee or a kick or something like that. You can finagle this even. You can see how you can get this into a walking pose. Now I'm going to show you some of what you can do. So yeah, uh, Revenge of the Fallen Leader Class Jetfire and the Revenge of the Fallen Leader Class Jetfire Optimus Prime combination. I can barely fit these guys into my studio together. There is, there are just no words. This sort of uh, fan-focused toy making. When you compare this to the combiners, quote unquote, that we get nowadays. You know, those ones like the, uh, for Rise of the Beast and for Cyberverse, where you just take one figure and sit it on top of the other figure and it, it done. And so they call it, you know, armor. This is armor. This is fantastic. It's amazing. It has no right being as good as it is. And... Um, again, I know that the guy who designed this had a very difficult time getting getting it all to work. But man, did he succeed. And did he succeed well. It, this is not a, you know, half-assed execution. 
it's not shoddy. It is not, it, it looks like it jumped off the screen. And if I just, the way I like to, to think of it is if I just saw this in the room without knowing it, I would assume this would be, this is like a standalone, like a built model kit. And that it wasn't, um, you know, it didn't transform. Because the fact that these decombine and transform individually is just monumental. And, and, and really, like, the nitpicks of posing, there are some posing nitpicks that I don't accept. Like how um, the original Armada Optimus Prime, you literally cannot move his legs because they are just a, a block. <laughs> yeah, no, they're just, they're they're a rectangle with legs painted on. No, but this you can get him into as many poses as you really need to. You can even detach the leg and have him doing a high kick if you want. You you can do anything you really want to and need to. And the video does not do it justice. You in the, you walk into a room and you see him in a display. He has a presence because he has a bulk. There is. There's dimensionality to them that you can't see because they're all, this is the same, what is one plane? But if, if you see him in person, there, there, he has, there's more, I'm gonna say, there's more than meets the eye. <laughs> and a, a way I like to think of it a lot, um, this is not a rule of thumb. Because there are many figures that are great figures that don't follow this rule or this uh, phrase. But if a figure looks good without having to pose, you know, standing straight, if they have a presence just that way, which Optimus Prime and many all of the incarnations pretty much do, then it's a good figure. And I think this especially just fulfills that to a T. I, I have him in a pose because a pose just, well, posing this guy doesn't make him cool. He's already cool. A pose elevates it from cool to awesome. <laughs> there is no two ways about it. Price-wise, I am... I don't want to look in the secondary market to see what this thing goes for because I bet it is a lot altogether. Is it worth it? That's up to you. It's up to what you want. Depending on what you want, there's options out there. If you want higher standards of articulation and um, to sacrifice a bit of screen accuracy and um, just more ease of flicking back and forth transformation and posability, I I'd get the Studio Series one. If you want posability and looks, get the get many of the, the model kits out there that don't transform the static ones of just... They don't even combine. There's just static Optimus with Jetfire's corpse on him uh, model kits. But if you want sheer engineering complexity and just brilliance, which what this is, this is brilliance, get this because you know, even if people don't like Transformers, go to your home, or if, you know, a lay person sees this, they might not think of it as impressive, but you know, getting a figure to have a good alternate mode, to have a good robot mode, and to have a good third mode, and be this scale, and have all the little complex details, and to make a good transformation, like it is, and to be able to pose it at all, it's an engineering marvel that honestly, to me, it's just, I can't put it into words how impressive it is, because it is, you want to just look at this guy. You want to, to soak it in everything, all that went into designing this. Okay, the fiddliness, this guy definitely has some fiddle factor. Nothing will really stay if you just pick him up and shake him, as you see. But the fact that he stays as well as he does is a testament to the designer's skill. Just, it's... It's truly impressive, and we should respect it. I'm out.